All right, Clinton. You called down the thunder, well now you got it. You see that? It says United please. States Marshal. Why, please don't kill me, please. please. Take a good look at him, Ike, because that's how you're gonna end up. The cowboys are finished, you understand me? I see a red sash, I kill a man wearing it. So run, you curse. Uh, run! Tell all the other curs the lie's coming. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Hey everyone, welcome back to The Boot. It's The Boot. We are recasting classic movie reboots so Hollywood doesn't have to. You're welcome, Hollywood. I mean, they're going to though, right? I mean, have you seen the rate at which things are appearing? Guys, I'm Brian Flynn, and the huckleberry next to me, Kenna Trent. Kenna, how you doing? <laughs> you really got me there. <laughs> I'm doing so good. I definitely don't have tuberculosis, in case you were wondering. <laughs> so I'm going to be totally fine. I'm going to look I'm gonna You're look gonna great. Look good. Move out west. Maybe it'll cure you. Guys, if you haven't guessed from the clues that we've said in the intro here, this week's episode, we're talking about Tombstone, the 1993 classic starring Kurt Russell, Dana Delaney, Val Kilmer. Anyone else? Sam Elliott. Michael. Michael Bean. Bean. Powers Booth. And of course. I mean, there are a million famous people in this movie. I feel like that, of course, could have been followed by. Bill Paxton. <laughs> Guys, I'm we very got- excited. I'm very excited. This is one of my top five favorite movies of all time. I'm excited to talk about this movie. I'm not so excited to think about the idea that they could even fathom remaking this movie. How could you ever remake Tombstone? I wish you guys could see his face right now. I'm livid that Kenna is making me do this, but I've decided to because all her favorite movies have already been remade. Yep. There's no more sacred cows for Kenna. Nope. All my precious movies, they're still, I've, they still haven't been remade. I've been completely jaded by the business. Remake anything. I don't care. All right, before we get into the reboot, we got some reboot news. Yeah, we want to talk about some actual reboots I mean, that are happening. The real world has real problems, and we got real reboots. The realest problems. This is the biggest problem that's going on right now. From Deadline. Conan the Barbarian TV series in the works at Amazon from Ryan Condal, Miguel Sapochnik, and Warren Littlefield. Created and written by Condal, Conan retells the classic character's story via a return to his literary origins. Driven out of his tribal homelands, Conan wanders the mysterious and treacherous world of civilization, where he searches for purpose in a place that rejects him as a mindless savages into his own hands. I like the line that he travels into the treacherous world known as civilization. Civilization. What a concept. This is interesting because I feel like there was a time when movies like Conan existed, and it wasn't just that character. It was like Hercules, and Hercules goes to like New York mm-hmm. and all stuff like that, and that was super popular. So I'm a little bit excited to think about that, just like coming back into the zeitgeist and becoming like that sort of fish out of water story happening. In this article, they mentioned that Amazon, who's also developing the Lord of the Rings reboot, which we talked about in a previous podcast, mm-hmm. this to me just sort of screams Game of Thrones is ending. We need to fill a vacuum. I think everybody I think wants Game of Thrones. Every streaming service, every network is is going to try and fill the vacuum, fill the void that Game of Thrones is going to leave behind in two years or in a year. Including Miguel Sapochnik, the director that's attached, right. who has directed some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones. Battle of the Bastards yeah, is his. Huge, huge episode. I love the original Conan the Barbarian 1982 version. I have not seen the Jason Momoa remake, mm-hmm. but I also really don't like Conan the Destroyer, and I don't remember why, but these are like childhood Mm. memories that I have. So I'm fine with remaking a Conan TV series. I just wonder, like, who do you think they're going to get? I mean, Jason Momoa is a really good pick. He's a really good pick. Um, Do you have any connection to Conan the Barbarian at all in any? I, my only connection to it is, one, this is like... This is like my dad's like style. So I have an awareness of this movie because oh. he loves movies like this. Um, my actual, when I hear Conan, what I think about is um, uh, the Weird Al movie, UHF. Oh, yeah. 
um, there's like a, a segment that they do because it's a movie about a, a UHF uh, television station. And one of the series that he creates as the owner is um, Conan the Librarian. Can you tell me where I can find a book on astronomy? Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> More news. Kenna, do you want to take this one? Yes. I'm passing you the ball. What a great setup. <laughs> You're passing me the ball, much like LeBron James might do. Speaking of LeBron James, he is producing a house party reboot for New Line. In case you're unfamiliar with House Party, it was a 1990 comedy movie featuring Kid and Play, the uh, rap hip hop duo of Kid and Play that led to two sequels in 1991 and 1994. James has said about the movie, this is definitely not a reboot. It's an entirely new look for a classic movie. Everyone I grew up with loved House Party. To partner with this creative team to bring out a new house party to a new generation is unbelievable. So I don't understand. It's not a reboot. Is it a sequel? I think maybe he used his terminology a little incorrectly because I think what he's saying is, you, let's not, don't think of this as an extension of the, the kid and play movie. Uh -huh. Think of it as an, a new part of this universe of house party. That just has similar themes and ideas, but is not like trying to take the same characters and okay. like reboot the idea. So by definition, it is a reboot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he plays sports for a living, so let's cut him some slack. Okay. Um, but um, I would definitely watch this reboot. Yeah, I love the idea of him talking about how like all my friends and I grew up watching this mm -hmm. movie and just the idea that it's about some kids who want to throw a party. Like, yeah. why not just take the idea? He's in a place now where he can do it, so why not just take the idea and create it for a new generation because you loved what it was so much I don't as a think, young person. I think that there is a lack of party movies. They were kind of big in the late 2000s mm -hmm. with uh, Superbad, mm -hmm. and then what was that one that was like first person, Party X or something like that? Oh, uh, Project X. Project X. I... I think there's a market for party movies. I really do. I really think every four years, mm -hmm. there's like a wave of party movies because they're specifically tailored for a new crop of college kids. Yeah, like how do how do people party in the current climate? Right. I remember Old School came out, I think, in my later high school years, mm -hmm. and it was sort of a movie that I carried into college. I wouldn't say, is it my college movie? Yeah, I, I maybe. I, you know what's funny is like I come into college with old school and I left college with Wedding Crashers. Hmm. Like that's sort of the arc of my college movie experience, which is weird because, I mean, different different Wilson brother, but same old Vince Vaughn. Vinnie Vaughn was there the whole, all four years. Um, he was there for you when nobody else was. No one else was there. I remember that. All right, guys, we're going to get into this reboot of Tombstone. Now, before we do, Kenna, why don't you uh, draw your laptop and shoot those rules out? You're so excited. I am very excited to talk about this movie. <laughs> I just don't. Like, even like This your, is the anti singing in the entire, rain for me. <laughs> your, your entire posture has like completely changed. Um, right. So, The Boot is a podcast that is best listened to with an open IMDb. Whether you're on your laptop or your phone, just pull it up because you're going to want to look through some names. If you're driving, pull over. Yeah, if you're on your way to work, be late. Pull this over. This is more important. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about a movie that you may not have seen. If you have not seen Tombstone, stop what you're doing right now, pause us, and go watch the movie. But then come back. Yeah. Don't, don't forget, forget to, get to come back. Don't forget the reason you went to watch this movie in the first place. And come back to us and uh, enjoy this journey along with us. How about them rules? Um, right. Because society cannot function without rules. It can't without be like... Without law. The... <laughs> I can't handle you right now. Um, this isn't the Wild West. So we have... We have rules. We are we're the we're the Earp brothers of this podcast. I like that. Uh, so first of all, we're not going to do any remakes, reboots, or long lost sequels. So what we're going to try not to do is pick a movie that's already been remade in the past twenty ish years, and this includes franchises like Star Wars or Rocky. Rocky, yeah, that sort of like appear 
every 10 to 20 years and just make another sequel. We'll Mama to- Mia. Mama Mia. Here I go again. <laughs> 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 Ryan's experience with singing in the rain. I think he would punch me in the mouth if I was like, let's do another sequel. Um, I just shook him all the way up. Um, yeah, so we're going to do our best not to pick movies like this. That, the second rule, is no imaginary casting. Unfortunately, our dream cast must be made up of actors that are, one, alive, and two, currently working for instance if anybody was like me and they like to put people from the old movie into the new movie you couldn't pick bill paxton Hmm. because he's left this r.i.p um that got really got really sad but this rule always gets sad because we always talk about dead actors a dead person they get it they have to be alive (laughs) brian's just upset that i brought up bill paxton um ignore him and the third is, we're not going to do any Tinder casting. We're not looking at the way people look. We're not swiping left and right. We are picking people based on how we have seen them mm-hmm. uh, and how we can vouch for their work as an actor. Great. They got to be talented. Or maybe not. Maybe not. All right, guys. We're going to get into the reboot of Tombstone. Get back. Move. Turn them loose. I swear to God, Law Dog, you don't step aside, we'll tear you apart. You die first, get it? Your friends might get me in a rush, but not before I make your head into a canoe. You understand me? He's bluffing. Let's rush him. No. He ain't bluffing. He'll kill me. And you, music lover, you're next. <laughs> drunk piano player you're so drunk you can't hit nothing in fact you're probably seeing double i have two guns one for each of you can I, i've seen tombstone i tried to do the math i think i'm almost certain i've watched this movie over a hundred times so how did you like this movie? <laughs> Have you ever seen this movie? I was so nervous making my list for this movie because I would think of actors that I just enjoyed but were kind of out of the box and I would be like, Brian's going to kill me if I try to replace this person with this person. He's going to look at me like I'm psycho. I'm um, very precious of this movie. And um, continue because I, I, I'm going to make a point about why I love this movie so much okay. in terms of uh, maybe another Wyatt Earp movie that came out around the same time. Yes. So, fin- sorry, finish what you As yours. Hollywood is wont to do, there were several, like, Wild West movies about Wyatt Earp at one time. I uh, have definitely seen this movie before. Um, but as I was watching, I realized that I did not remember very much of it. This is kind of interesting. My AP US history class in high school, um, not to brag about, you know, my education. You are bragging. Um, <laughs> I didn't take the test. It doesn't matter. Um, but our like teacher for that class was really cool. Shout out to Mr. Walters, who will never hear this podcast. Um, and so we did, when we got to this point in history, an actual like reenactment of the gunfight at OK Corral, where like he took us into like this part of the school where we were able to like um, sort of physically be the character so we could kind of see how it all went down. And so I just have this sort of like love for the idea of this story and like the idea that that w- this romantic idea I think we have of the Wild West is all perpetuated by movies. And, and I think that's so much fun. So as I mentioned earlier, there was another Wyatt Earp movie mm-hmm. called Wyatt Earp starring mm-hmm. Kevin Costner, Dennis Quaid, Michael Madsden, and uh, and Gene Hackman, a Bill wh- Pullman, Bill Pullman, a whole slew of other incredible actors, mm-hmm. and I had never really seen that version because I've just always loved Tombstone. Recently, I rented it, I watched it, I fucking hated it, <laughs> and it, it's definitely something like I love my version. I'm, you know, I'm entrenched in this one movie, so to watch this other movie is very weird and strange. But this movie was written and directed by Lawrence Kasdan, one of my personal heroes, and it's so slow to the point 
that I I had to stop it like four times because I just got I was just like I don't I don't care, but it's that version of Wyatt Earp is more historically accurate than this version oh, of Tombstone, and to quote uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. You know what I mean? Tombstone is the legend of Wyatt Earp, not so much the actual fact of what happened. So it's right. funny that you bring up like the history of what happened because this incident at the OK Corral, there it, people witnessed it, mm-hmm. but they, you know, had different interpretations of like what went down. Some things actually did happen, they know that happened, but in Tombstone's version, it's not exactly historically accurate. We'll get into all that. Maybe we will. I'm just a wellspring of information on this movie. You really, really love this movie. I really, really love this movie. And so it was was actually very hard to kind of cast people that I felt comfortable Mm -hmm. in these roles. Passing it on to. We're going to talk about Val Kilmer later, but Val Kilmer straight up (sighs) should have won an Oscar for his performance as Doc Holliday. Look, darling. Johnny Ringo. The deadliest pistol they have since Wild Bill, they say. What do you think, darling? Should I hate him? You don't even know him. No, that's true, but... I don't know, there's just something about him. Something around the house. I don't know. Reminds me of... me. No, I'm sure of it. I hate him. He's drunk. In vino veritas. There was a point at the beginning, because we first meet the villains of the movie, and um, just like Michael Bean's, like, is that how you pronounce his name? I think so. His delivery is so good. I was like, wow. He's not going to be in this movie very much, but his, like, performance is Mm -hmm. so great. Midway through the movie, I was like, scratch that. Val Kilmer gives a hero's performance. It's amazing. He's so good. They're so good. And then there's actors who appear in this movie that will shock you when you if you've never seen this movie. Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton mm-hmm. as the degenerate gambler in the saloon. Thomas Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church as, I like to call him, music lava. That's how Doc Holliday refers to him. But what was I? What were we talking about? Um, Michael Rooker. Michael is in Rooker. This yeah. Movie. Jason Priestley is in this movie. Billy fucking Zane. <laughs> okay, when he because he plays if again you should have stopped and watched the movie. But if you haven't, he plays an actor who mm-hmm. is like traveling with Josephine Marcus. When he gets up on the stage and Curly Bill is like. Um, the prettiest man I ever saw. Prettiest man I ever saw. I man, was like, I love this movie. He's not wrong. <laughs> he he's not wrong. The prettiest man I ever saw. Charlton Heston is in this movie. Yep. Stephen Lang is in this movie. Oh, Stephen Lang. I mean, we could go on and on about all the people who appear in this movie. Yep. Wyatt Earp's like fifth cousin plays a role in this movie, but yes. we only have room for five. So mm-hmm. the characters that we're going for for this movie are Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Josephine Marcus, Wyatt's. Um, the love of Wyatt's life. As Which I have so much to say about. We, we'll, we'll talk about um, Maddie, his his common-law wife. Curly Bill Brocious and Johnny Ringo. Johnny Ringo. And there may be some honorable mentions of the other Earp brothers. I wrote a few down, but if you didn't, don't worry. I'm, I'm just very excited. Wow. The look, the, <laughs> the look he just gave me was like, I did this, but if you didn't do it, well. Guess I did the extra credit. What are you going to do? <laughs> okay. So... We're going to talk about Wyatt Earp, historically a known lawman, but also Mm -hmm. kind of a known degenerate. Like, he wasn't a guy who started off on the straight and narrow, Mm -hmm. which I think in this movie makes a great Wyatt Earp. He's coming to Tombstone. He wants to just settle with his brothers. The family has been separated for a long time. He wants to come here, settle down, make a lot of money, and and leave the law behind. And what inevitably happens is... The criminal element rears its head, Mm -hmm. and he can no longer stand idly by. Now, um, Kurt Russell, to me, is Wyatt Earp. And I want you to go first because I, you know, I want to see who you got. I think we actually might have picked similar people. I think so, especially I I hinted at somebody um, during the week, and I was like, man, I bet we probably picked the same Mm -hmm. person for Doc Holliday. But um, I will say I think Wyatt Earp singularly is the most difficult role I've had to cast this far yeah. on this podcast because there's just something about there's just something about Kurt Russell it's amazing he's I mean I say that as if like you can't put your finger on it I mean 
he is a phenomenal actor. He's gorgeous. There's two lines in the movie that describe Wyatt Earp. Like when Dana Delaney and Billy Zane get off the stagecoach to yes. Tombstone, Billy Zane describes Wyatt Earp. He describes his eyes as being like a hawk. And uh-huh. then later in the week after they go see the play, Josephine whisks through and she's dancing with all the men. And then mm-hmm. she comes to Wyatt, who admittedly has burning passion for her. Yeah rebukes her offer to dance with her. He turns away, Mm -hmm. and Doc Holliday says, Wyatt, you are an oak. And I think that's really hard to cast. It's really hard to cast what Kurt Russell has really And honestly, I think it's difficult because it is not like we make so many Westerns now that it's like naturally we would put John Wayne in this movie because he's an old cowboy. Mm -hmm. Those people, we don't make movies like that anymore. Those people don't just exist fresh in our minds. So you kind of have to dig up a new cowboy, which I don't think this person is like new. I think as soon as I thought of them, I was like, maybe there's somebody better. But when I thought about Wyatt Earp as the sort of like tested lawman who just wanted to get out of the business, Mm -hmm. this guy, I was like, he plays a little more of a weathered Mm. Wyatt Earp. Okay. Um, But I, he still has a lot of charm, which is essential. So I picked Matthew McConaughey. Ooh, I I love it. (laughs) I'm so like taken aback. Like, yeah. Um, I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> right. Well, what's well, funny? Well, uh, first of all, McConaughey. We don't have to explain who Matthew McConaughey. No, is. if you don't know who Matthew McConaughey is, stop listening. To we the don't podcast. want you to listen. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> what was I going to say about? Oh, yeah. I immediately thought of first of all his charisma. Mm-hmm. His just sort of his presence is definitely someone who could erase Kurt Russell a little bit. I just think of. Um, him is uh, Cole from True Detective. Mm-hmm. Is that what you thought? Well, I think f- I first just think about his swagger just as a person. He gives off this, like, he sort of looks like he should just have a gun on his hip. Mm-hmm. Like, that's who he is as a person. But then I was like, yeah, but is he capable of playing the role? And I was like, look at the whole first season of True Detective. Right. He nails it. And I think we're ready for him to become a like Western hero. Yeah. I think it would be a really solid move for his career. And I like your point that this is a Wyatt who has come for a new beginning. Like he's more weathered. Like mm-hmm. his past is behind him. Yeah. And, um, even though it's not really. For the first time in our lives, we got a chance to stop wandering and finally be a family. Now this is trouble we don't need. You saw what happened to Fred White. We know what we're doing, Wyatt. Okay, fine. Say you're right. Say you don't get yourself killed. That's something else. All those years I worked those cow towns, I was only ever mixed up in one shooting. Just one. But a man lost his life and I took it. You don't know how that feels, Morton. Believe me, boy, you don't ever want to know. Not ever. Props, Kenna. You you wowed me on the first one. Ah, yes! You got me. We did it. I picked Joel Edgerton. Ooh, that is a really good one. And I had two. I, I had two that I kept flipping back and forth, back and forth. But I picked Joel Edgerton. If you don't know who Joel Edgerton is, he's in Loving. He was in, oh, God, with the Ridley Scott Moses movie. I, I wanted to say Prince of Egypt, but that's not what it's called. It's interesting because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, does he star in very many things? He's in um, Zero Dark Thirty. Mm-hmm. I mean, Loving is really the only one I can think of currently offhand where he is sort of... He's a co-lead, though. He's not really just like He was in Star Wars, which is... uh, But he's not the lead in Star Wars. He plays young Uncle Owen. I I love Joel Edgerton. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm like, this man is... Like, you get him that thick Kurt Russell mustache, and you watch him step off of a train? Yeah. I'm in, man. If I I was Josephine Marcus, I would be like, I'm going to get me that one. Doesn't she say something like that? She's like, I want one. Yes, and then Billy in a, Zane in a very a, weird way. Yeah, with a great quip, he's just like happy hunting. <laughs> I love that. All right, I um, I'm glad you enjoyed my pick. I loved your pick. Man, we're, we're, off to a great we're off to a great start. Now this is where it gets harder mm-hmm. because, like before, we talked about Val Kilmer. If you have not seen this movie, every line Val Kilmer says in this movie, oh you gosh. will repeat to yourself. Over and over and over. The second time he says, please replace my poor impression with the actual clip, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I'm your Huckleberry. I like rolled off of the chair. <laughs> I could not believe that they used that line twice in the movie. But his delivery of everything that could be perceived as completely ridiculous is stunning. 
It's so good. And the way he plays the disease, the way he mm-hmm. plays his degenerate behavior, his gambling addiction, his relationship with Kate, which was a real relationship. And, you know, Doc's life very much was one of, I'm going to die any minute, so I'm going yeah. to die doing whatever the hell I want, which is gamble. Yeah. Um, There's spend that time great with- part towards the end where clearly he's like dying in front of them. And who who are they with who says like, why are you the one who's sticking around? And, um, and he says something like, like, why Earp's my friend? Doc, short of being dead, what the hell are you doing this for anyway? Why Earp is my friend. Hell, I got lots of friends. I don't. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's heart, but it's so, like, there's just stuff about the character that you're like, how, how did they pull this off? I think the death scene when Doc is in, in bed and it's mm-hmm. the last time he and Wyatt see each other and Wyatt has to say, he makes Wyatt say goodbye to him. Yeah. Val Kilmer is astonishing. I feel like it's it's like that scene you just mentioned where it's not this grandiose where he's stepping out with his guns, you know, ready to go toe to toe with someone. Mm-hmm. He's quietly dying in a bed. Say goodbye to me. Go grab that spirited actress. Make her your own. Take that beauty and run. Don't look back. Live every second. Live right up the hill. Live quiet. Live for me. I love this movie for so many reasons. Yeah. I would say Val Kilmer is 50% of, of all reasons. So I went last for Wyatt, so I have to go first okay. for Doc. I had to pick an actor who's charming, and I wanted to pick an actor who might not have done this kind of role yet. Mm-hmm. I picked the Gaz. I picked Ryan oh. Gosling. Interesting. Yeah. I think I picked him based on his work in Nice Guys. Mm-hmm. I got to see him as that kind of cop duo. He was more comedic, but he was still kind of strung out a bit. But also the place beyond the pines when he plays like the criminal in that. He can be very subtle, which is ultimately the key to what made Val Kilmer so great. Mm-hmm. Is that you can take this part and run with it. Mm-hmm. Or you can you can just take it down a notch and it'll be perfect. I, I'm not sure I'm, I like yours as much as mine, <laughs> but I think it's an interesting idea. All right. Who you got? I picked someone who initially came to mind when we were doing Singing in the Rain, mm-hmm. and I desperately wanted to cast him in that. But then when I watched Tombstone, I was like, I can't picture somebody else being Doc Holliday. And I picked... Chris Pine. I knew you were going to say Chris Pine because I also thought of him for Singing in the Rain uh-huh. and I also thought of him I thought of him more for Wyatt but he's a great pick for Doc Holliday. I think partially because we when we saw him get really serious in Hell or High Water mm-hmm. I mean that performance is incredible but I kept thinking about taking that intensity and tossing in a little bit of his character from, like, Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. Like, that kind of energy. I think he could be funny. He could be, like, suave. He could be all these things. And I would believe it. Have you seen the movie Smoking Aces, where he plays sort of, like... Yes, once. He's so wild in that. But he's a tremendous character actor, which is weird, because he plays, you know, Captain Kirk in the Star Trek movies. He generally is, like, cast now in these, like, sort of straight man leading roles. Mm Mm-hmm. But he, I think he's really more of a character actor, which is really surprising for someone who can toe that line on both. I just, I see him as the sort of, because I think part of, part of Val Kilmer's charm is that he makes his like degenerate lifestyle, the fact that he's dying, he makes it all look really good. So I was like, man, who is the person who would like catch your eye, but that you know you can't mess with? Yeah. Chris Pine. Josephine Marcus. Josephine is a very interesting character. I looked up her sort of background. Mm Mm-hmm. And her history, so we can now talk about what you've been dying to talk about this whole podcast. When Wyatt and the Earps come to Tombstone, Morgan and his brother Virgil are both married to two women. Wyatt brings his common law wife, Maddie, who is an opium addict, basically. (laughs) And through this whole movie, she's sort of languishing in this addiction. And you watch Wyatt and her's relationship completely deteriorate while... 
Wyatt's relationship with Josephine right. basically ignites, which actually happened in history. Like they met mm-hmm. in Tombstone. They ended up spending the rest of their lives together. And even to the point when Wyatt Earp died and someone was writing his biography, Josephine tried to erase Maddie from Wyatt's history. <laughs> this poor woman. Okay, so first of all, yeah, his brothers are married. Bill Paxton, who plays Morgan, his younger brother. I did not like the way he looked at any woman in this who? movie. He is the one who he's like so excited about his young, beautiful wife. But as soon as they dr- like ride into Tombstone, he's the first person to be like, look at all these women, like the oh, people yeah. at like the public house. And I was like, your wife is sitting directly behind you in this wagon. <laughs> um, second of all, yes, Maddie, whose given name is Celia Ann, is addicted to laudanum. To laudanum. To the point where uh, there's a scene in the movie where Wyatt's like, I don't know, looking for a shirt in their dresser drawer. And he happens upon maybe a stash of 20 bottles, empty bottles of laudanum. You're right. Is that the opium Lou gave you? Maybe you should see a doctor. (sighs) Wyatt, it's just headaches. I know what I'm doing. No, I don't need to see a doctor. All right. Just go. Everything's fine, Wyatt. Look well. I think my big issue with their relationship was that they attempt to make it so that we're okay with him leaving Maddie because she's a drug addict. I don't know if that is why they, the movie definitely sort of seems like because Wyatt is off making all this money and Maddie's at home in bed, basically getting high all the time. I think it's, I think it's more because he meets Josephine and they go on that horseback ride and she starts talking about she does in whatever the she wants. Least subtle meet cute right. ever in the, the history of movies. I don't have time to be proper. I want to live. I'm a woman. I like men. If that means I'm not ladylike, then I guess I'm just not a lady. You're different. No arguing that. But you're a lady, all right. I'll take my oath on it. I think she just sort of enraptures him. As someone who has more life than maybe Maddie does, because Maddie unfortunately has an unfortunate an disease and question. an addiction to Lana. Is laudanum. Josephine a version of a manic pixie dream girl? Oh, uh, that's a really great question that I have not thought about this movie because I would say no for one reason. Okay. She's not trying to get Wyatt to grow up, she just mm. sort of tempts Wyatt into a different life that he can't walk into yet because he has to deal with the murder of his brother, Mm -hmm. the attack on his family, his whole revenge tour. Um, My favorite part of the He's currently in a relationship. Like, and I I can see how you see this. Like, he's going down one path in one life. He meets a girl and then suddenly he wants to walk another one. Because he doesn't just, like, meet any girl. Like, they have this, like, like, this complete aside where they're, like, walking through this little, like, wooded area. And Mm -hmm. she's just, like, she's a complete free spirit. This man has responsibility and a past. And she is just, like, I want to order room service for the rest of my life. I mean, you have a point for sure. And it's very, like, he's looking at her like, that's what I need. But only because what's, like, stuck at home is this woman who is going through a tremendous amount of pain... Like, nobody tries to help her. And that, right. that really frustrated me. Well, I think you're looking for a scene where Wyatt sits down with Manny is explaining, like, look, you have a problem. I will help you with this problem. But yeah. currently, I'm feeling feelings for other people. Maybe we also should talk about that separately. <laughs> that discussion doesn't happen because when Morgan Earp dies mm-hmm. and he runs out into the street, and it's raining, and both women approach him at that same time, yeah. and he rebukes both because he now he can't be with anyone because his only goal now has narrowed into killing Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and all the cowboys that scene in this was, revenge tour. Was super upsetting. The whole like literal blood on his hands, mm-hmm. and just being like, "Get away from me!" And then later when he's like, "I'm so sorry that I said that," and she's like, ah, "I forgave you the moment you said it." Again, that was a moment where I was like, "She's like." This, like, perfect option woman who, like, doesn't care about what's going on. She does care because her friend dies. Because she Billy Zane ca- gets killed. She does care. But what I'm saying is, like, she doesn't care that, like, he's got, like, stuff going on. Because like, she loves him tremendously and yeah. it doesn't matter. 
I just I'll I take saw... the criticism. I'll take the criticism. <laughs> but nothing could ever ever make this movie any less. For you. I guess maybe I disagree, but you know what? You might be valid. You might have you know you definitely have a valid point. I just don't know. Up. I just don't know if you're. Correct. I mean, normally we act like children, so right. it was very adult of you. Let's get back to casting. Okay, Josephine. I yes, I went last last time, so I'll go first this time. This one was one that I traded out a lot mm-hmm. um, because I had several ideas, and I was just like, "Who is that classic old west woman that's like a classic beauty but sturdy?" Mm-hmm. Like someone in her position, someone who has a profession, mm-hmm. quote unquote, who is like traveling around living her best life. Like who is that woman who can handle it all on her own? So I picked Haley Atwell. Huh. Who um for fans of Marvel movies and shows plays Peggy Carter. Agent Peggy Carter. She also appeared in a really wonderful episode of Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. She's not like a movie star right. yet. But I, I like her a lot. There's something really reliable about her. And so I just kept envisioning the sort of reveal of like she's on stage and everybody's like, who's that? Mm-hmm. And then when she takes her mask off and it's like, oh, this is this like mysterious woman who rolled into town. Yeah. I just I, I envisioned her as that kind of person. I definitely like that choice. I like Haley Atwell because I'm a comic book guy. I like all the Marvel movies. Like Peggy Carter is definitely someone who she's a character who could exist in the West. And someone yeah. that, like, you know, a gunfighter or, you know, a person like Wyatt Earp could probably see more of himself in than mm-hmm. Maddie Blaylock. So, yeah, I, I like it. You're just impressed that I know all the characters. Poor names. Maddie. Poor Maddie. I actually read up on what happened to Maddie in real life, and it's really sad. Doesn't she die? Well, we all die. But, I mean... <laughs> <What>? Wow. <laughs> she does. She dies. Um, so... Maddie used to be a prostitute, and that's how mm-hmm. she met Wyatt. And then that they old dog. lived together for a while. They became common law married. Mm-hmm. Then after the shootout at the OK Corral, or the murder of uh, Morgan Earp. Remember what I said about seeing a light when you're dying? Yeah. It ain't true. I can't see a damn thing. Virgil goes home to bring the body home. Maddie goes with the Earps. She travels with her ex-husband's family, Mm -hmm. lives with them for a bit, and then decides to return to a town in Arizona where she used to... She was going to get her job back as a prostitute. (gasps) Oh, that makes me so sad. And she died there. She died on July 3rd, like 18... I don't remember the date, 1877 or something. She she OD'd in a a room. And that town that she died in... Nobody who who seemingly liked or loved her tried to help her. No one. She had nobody. I and want justice for Maddie. Even worse, the town that she died in and was buried in is now a ghost town. <gasps> Ooh, that's exciting. That's exciting. But I like, love she, a ghost it's town. like she had. She's just like erased from history. And if Josephine had her way, she would have been erased from history. Right. So it's a, it's definitely a more tragic character than oh, than man. this movie. It makes me gives so us. sad because they do sort of give you the impression that like she was really taken in by um, the other wives and so it makes sense that like mm-hmm. if those are your if those are your only friends like you would return right with the family but uh just the fact that she like felt like she just had to go back to her old life i know it's really of, awful it's kind of upsetting but we're here to talk about josephine who Woo! cares about maddie wait you did yeah i didn't do yeah you i didn't, didn't do, do my yours. josephine <clears throat> now it's funny that you mentioned like manic pixie dream girl because now i'm looking at my choice and i'm wondering did i pick a manic pixie dream girl maybe it's i did because you're a man oh come on <laughs> But I, I think I see Josephine through the lens of like, this is something that's very precious to mm-hmm. Wyatt in a town full of violence. Their relationship is definitely strange because it's almost immediate. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm trying to pick a woman who had as much like charisma as I could think of. Mm-hmm. So I picked Alison Brie. Interesting. She's also on my list. Right? Yeah. Good. I'm glad. I love Alison Brie. Yeah, she's fantastic. I'm in love with Alison Brie. Oh, wow. Good for Dave Franco. <laughs> so, like, um, if you didn't, if you didn't get to be with Paul Rudd, you would want to be with Alison. Yeah, Brie. it's like Paul Rudd, a number one. Okay, Alison Brie. Okay, just so we're far behind second. Just so we're straight. Just so we're just so we're all clear <laughs> on how Bry guy who's on his list. Yeah, so I chose Alison Brie. Um, I, I like that a lot. I don't know if we've talked about Josephine and and Maddie a lot, so I don't know if. And she's on your list. I don't have to defend this choice. No, she's. 
She's really great. Okay. So let's get to the villains. Ooh, the villains. The villains. The this uh, one was fun. leader of the cowboy gang, Curly Bill Brocious, played by Powers Booth. Mm-hmm. Also R.I.P. He died yes. a few years ago. I think like last year. Curly Bill is kind of brigadocious. He's a little more wild compared to Johnny Ringo, who's kind of like these two are kind of the yin and yang to wide and dock in a lot of ways. Like mm-hmm. Johnny Ringo is like a methodical killer, but he's quiet. Curly Bill's a little more loud, and, and you know, they kind of play on Wyatt and Doc a little bit. Mm-hmm. I couldn't really think of anyone who was sort of would have that bravado, but someone who could in, at least instill fear and lead this kind of gang in the West. Mm-hmm. So I picked John Bernthal. Yeah. No, he's he's a great villain. I mean, he played this sort of unhinged killer in The Walking Dead for the first few seasons. Yeah, he's in The Punisher. He plays I, Frank Castle yeah, in the Netflix think, series Punisher. I think he, they, that sort of like set him into this zone of mm-hmm. like he's the dark actor. He lives in a world of violence in most projects he's in. Although he's in Baby Driver. I'll, un, admittedly, I still haven't seen yet. Yeah, he's a very small part in Baby yeah. Driver. Who you got? Um, we've actually talked about this person already mm. on the podcast. I wanted to pick someone who, because I, I sort of saw, like, the idea is that Curly Bill is the head of the gang. Johnny Ringo is his successor. Yeah. And there's even that part where, like, Johnny Ringo gets drunk and Curly Bill is like, like, I'm worried about the future of this group if you're in charge. Johnny, don't! No! Johnny, don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. No! Come on. I want them spitting blood! Easy, son. Easy. Now ain't the time. I tell you, boys, even I'm worried what's going to happen once Ringo runs this outfit. God have mercy. Even though there's another part of the movie where Curly Bill gets drunk and shoots the actual Fred like White. marshal. Yeah. I was like, gosh, he needs to be that sort of leader that even when he screws up, people are, are still behind him. He's still got enough in him to continue on. And I came up with Vince Vaughn. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. I'm, so, like, your whole cast is kind of shaping in my mind. So now I'm just watching Matthew McConaughey mm-hmm. storm into a creek with a loaded shotgun while Vince Vaughn empties his pistols. Which m- really... Completely missing. Yeah, and that really actually happened. happened. Yeah. And steps to Curly Bill and just Matthew McConaughey blows Vince Vaughn's head off. Here's the thing about Vince Vaughn. He has... His career has taken quite the turn. Uh-huh. I True Detective season two was a mess. Yeah, the mess of messes. Right. But his performance in season two was incredible. Given how much we think of him as a as a comedic actor, I mean, even I don't I don't know if the remake of Psycho. I don't like to pin a lot of him uh-huh. on that. But I just sort of thought about like if he is this sort of cold blooded killer who also happens to be charismatic enough to be the lead of a gang. Mm-hmm. I, I think he fits right in. Yeah, I agree. I like him. I really like that, too. All right. So Johnny Ringo, the sort of the man who does take over for the Cowboy Gang once Curly Johnny Bill gets his comeuppance. Ringo. And probably one of the best uh, switcheroonies in a West, uh, a head-to-head with Doc Holliday at the end, when Doc is literally dying of tuberculosis and shows up for Wyatt in that great moment when Wyatt, before he leaves for the gunfight, and goes can I beat him? And Doc's like, no. <laughs> and Wyatt walks into his own death because mm-hmm. he has to get revenge for Morgan. Oh, and he like gives him his badge. Yeah. That was really It's lovely. really good. And then, looky Lou, here comes old Doc Holliday to save the day. And he's just like, I wasn't as sick as I let yeah. on. Oh, I wasn't quite as sick as I made out. My hypocrisy goes only so far. All right. Let's finish it. Indeed, sir. The last charge of Wyatt Earp and his immortals. Who did you pick? Oh, is it my turn to go first? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I am a little shocked at who I picked just because I put one of my favorite people in the whole world on this list and ultimately decided against it. Um, I ended up picking Toby Kebble. Oh, yeah. I know who he is. Who, if you haven't seen the best episode of Black Mirror that he is in, then you should definitely go check that out. He's also in Kong Skull Skull Island. Island. He also plays Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four Mm -hmm. remake. He's He's a super interesting actor because, like, he was picked by Andy Serkis to do the motion capture for one of the apes. Oh yeah, he's in the plane. He's Koba. Uh, yes, which is 
so interesting to me because I really feel like that is like next level Mm -hmm. of like where people are heading. Um, But yeah, I like him a lot. I specifically tried to go watch Kong Skull Island just to hear him do a Southern accent. Yeah. And I didn't make it very far into the movie. (laughs) But I, because let's be honest, Kong Skull Island is an ode to how cool helicopters are. Not a monster movie. (laughs) But um, I I saw him and heard him and felt good about him and made my final choice. I picked Milo Ventimiglia. From This Is Us and Heroes. Gilmore Girls. Gilmore um, Girls. Oh, this is one Kenna is not agreeing with. Well, I'm mostly shaking my head at This Is Us because I just don't get it. Oh, okay. But. So here's my stance on Milo. Hmm. I think he's a good actor. I think he's a good actor. I might have broken a rule with him. I think I broke the Tinder rule. And uh, here's why. Okay. I think he has a great stare. And I think for a Western, when you can get an actor who can kind of give you that look, then you got to cast him. Mm -hmm. So I picked Milo, one, because I know his work, two, because I think his work is great, and three, put that Johnny Ringo hat and have him just kind of, like, have him do the scene where he quotes Revelations. Hey, Johnny, what that Mexican mean a sick horse is going to get us, huh? He's quoting the Bible, Revelations, behold, a pale horse, the man who sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. I just think he'd be a cool second-hand guy who doesn't get a lot of opportunities, I think, in big-budget movies. So that's where I went. I feel like you're not on. You're not. It's not I just, there for I have you. a very specific bias. Not that I don't think he's a good actor, but I'm a massive Gilmore Girls fan. Right. Gillies. Mm-hmm. Where you at? And Jess is my least favorite boyfriend. <gasps> Logan is my first, in case you're okay. curious. And I just truly don't understand the obsession with This Is Us. And so when I see him, I feel like I see the iconic parts that he's now mm-hmm. become associated with. Okay. And I don't see him as as his own character. Okay. I disagree. <laughs> he's an actor. He can play any role he wants. Um, <laughs> see, all right. We made it so far. And now Brian's like, nope. We're done. Is that it? Did we do our five? Yeah, we did our we five. We did our five. Um, we haven't even talked about the shootout at the OK Corral. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. my one criticism of the Let's movie. As they walk to the OK Corral and the theme music is building, there's just a building burning in the back. I had the same question. Who lit that building on fire? Who lit the fire? fire? And there's only one guy throwing water at it. <laughs> and I'm like, look, I can we just pause the, the gunfight for two? Maybe half an hour so we can make sure no one is dying in this blaze behind you. It's, it makes for a cool shot. But yeah. other than that, the whole town is made of wood. It could all go up. It's legitimately, I couldn't believe, I think because like I'm familiar probably most of all in this movie with that mm-hmm. shot of them walking. And so then when you're watching it and you sort of see that, you're like, how did this? I know. How did this happen? Why wasn't this their first concern before they go to the OK Corral, but everybody looked wonderful. And I... Kurt Russell's long jacket. Oh, man. I was really into it. I love that, the choreography of that gunfight. So here's the historical thing. Ike Clanton mm-hmm. is, I think Ike is the one who runs away, and it's someone else who who rushes in yeah. to the, the boudoir or whatever. But I don't think Josephine was taking that no. boudoir photo at the time. But in real life, there is a photo of her that like circulated around yes. town. After she broke up with Behan, he showed everyone this semi-naked photo that yeah. she had taken of herself to like besmirch her character. So they're like kind of cramming a lot of weird histories yeah. and, and trying to make it. like characters that were peripheral a little more central. Yeah, yeah. Doc Holliday actually says, "You'd be a Daisy if you do." Yeah. That's historically so accurate. good. It's so good. I, You're I a mean, Daisy if you do. All right. Um, so we don't have time for anything else. This one's running a little long. I do have some honorable mentions for Virgil Earp and Morgan Earp. Lee Schreiber and Emery Ooh. Cohen. Oh, I like Emery yeah. Cohen a lot. Yeah. Um, it's hard to recast Sam Elliott and Bill Paxton, though. Like, Sam Elliott is a cowboy. 100%. And There's Bill, no, nobody else like him. No one else. And Bill Paxton is Bill Paxton. So, <laughs> good luck. I mean, we tried to recast him on this podcast before, and it, it's, it's, difficult. it's very difficult. So It's really difficult. Should we, should we get to our last little segment? Yeah. Let's get Which to... Which is... Where would Barry Pepper go? Where's Barry Pepper go? 
So if you haven't listened to this podcast, if for some reason you're joining us on episode seven, why? Which is really strange. <laughs> Hopefully, one of the better ones. Uh, we do a segment called Where Would Barry Pepper Go? And we cast our favorite character actor, Barry Pepper, who you might know from Saving Private Ryan and Green Mile. Uh, Battlefield Earth, although I don't know why, why you would, would you ever know have him seen him specifically from, from that. Earth. Um, and we try and give him a role in this movie. We try and give him a role in every movie we do. I put Barry Pepper as Turkey Creek Jack Johnson, who was one of the guys who went on Wyatt's revenge tour oh. after Morgan dies. Interesting. But you meet him earlier mm-hmm. when Wyatt is introducing Doc to Sheriff Behan, mm-hmm. and he stumbles out of a saloon gunfight with um, who's the other guy? I don't know. I don't know. There's two guys that they, they come. I cast them as, as... You should know. I should know. Um, it's interesting that you chose him because I chose the other Cowboys mutineer. What is, what is the the guy who leaves the Cowboys gang? McMaster. Oh, yeah. Played by Michael Rooker. You're right. That's yeah. who I picked. That's a great pick. He could have also been Charlton Heston's role mm-hmm. um, when they go to the, old, the ranch. He, uh, Hooker's ranch. Henry can I, Hooker. Can I say that his revenge tour was possibly one of my favorite parts of the movie? Um, just because the action all at once was so wonderful. Literally just lots of shooting. Which, by the way, the shooting style in the Old West was just, don't look, just shoot. <laughs> yeah. Spray as many bullets There's as you can. There's just lots of scenes of them with their heads down, just like popping off. But... Um, there's a part where they like uh, they bust in on one of the cowboys in bed with some prostitutes, I'm assuming, mm-hmm. and whoever Doc Holliday is with is like, don't move, or nobody move, and he's like, by all means, please move. That's, that's Turkey Creek. Yeah, that's who I, that's who I put Barry And Pepper. I loved that. Also, I sounded a little bit like Frank Underwood just then. Yeah, a little bit. Feel free to replace that with the actual uh, quote. All right. <laughs> If you've made it all the way through, thank you so much for joining us on this very special episode of The Boot. Thanks for joining us. It's been really fun. Um, Kenna, where can they find us? You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and really wherever you get your pods. Just search for us. By Apple Boot. Podcasts, do you mean iTunes? Yes. Okay. I, that's the complicated... Yeah. There's the whole thing about how like the new podcast app is like Apple Podcasts, oh, okay. and then there's... Listen, I don't make the rules... Um, but I follow them. You can find us on social media, us together, this podcast, on Twitter at the Boot Podcast, and on Instagram at Boot Podcast. You can find Kenna on Twitter at Kenna Trent, <gasps> all one word. You can find Brian on Twitter and Instagram at Flynn B. Nailed it! All right, everyone, <laughs> please subscribe, please rate, please tell your friends to do the same. If you enjoy this, we'll be back with many more movies to come. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, Johnny, I apologize. I forgot you were there. You may go now. <laughs>